Hi, welcome to my latest video. Today I'm going to be investigating the cause of a slight oil leak from the engine on my Land Rover Freelander 2. It never used to leak any oil until I had the clutch replaced recently and ever since then it's tripped a little bit of black oil on the ground. Uh, I'm worried that it may be the seal behind the, the, the flywheel but that was actually changed when the clutch was done and the mechanic who replaced the clutch said that the clutch had been slipping because of oil leaking past the seal. So it was leaking oil previously onto the clutch but nothing was really visible on the ground under the car. Now the clutch is working perfectly I've got oil dripping onto the ground. I don't know where it's coming from but I do need to investigate this. Uh, we recently visited some friends of ours in Essex and they just had a brand new driveway put down and when I moved my car in the morning it had left a large black oily stain on their nice driveway block paving so I need to I need to try to find out what's going on with this so you can see here it's it's underneath my car there's there's an oily mark it's not fresh wet oil although I am finding sort of when I park up uh, I, I do see a little patch of oil under the car and if it's left overnight after a long journey oil will have collected onto the uh, the bottom of the, the sump guard and the engine under tray and then that slowly sort of drips down onto the ground a small bit of oil leaking is well it's just kind of normal for Land Rover ownership really and in a way it uh, keeps the keeps the rust at bay under the car so there are advantages to an oil leak but it's just a little bit awkward when you go and visit someone and then leave oil on their driveway. So I'm going to get underneath the car, put my tarpaulin down. I've removed the Mantec sump guard and the, the factory uh, sort of un underpan. And I'm going to be using my nice new torch here. This was actually sent to me by one of my fans. I actually received my first fan mail a few months ago. A letter from a guy called Rob. Rob is in the, the Freelanders First uh, Facebook group. And um, there's, there's, there's another group as well he's in. I think it's called All Things Freelanders. But they, they, they're a Freelander owners club online. They do a lot of charity fundraising for air ambulance and things like that. So uh, a nice guy. He wrote a letter. Uh, of appreciation saying how much he enjoyed my videos and uh, encouraging me to keep keep going keep making videos and as a token of his kindness he sent me this little torch which uh, is brilliant and perfect for what I want to do today so thank you very much Rob much appreciated I've been waiting all summer for a time where I could use this it's, it's just been too light and sunny really I haven't been out here in the dark in the winter this will be absolutely fantastic very very bright um, and even though it's light at the moment, I do need this under the car now to see what is going on. So, let's pop that down there. Get in under here. Now, when I look underneath, now hopefully the exposure is going to be okay. It, at first glance, it doesn't look too bad actually. This is all dry. Bottom of the sump's dry. Nothing's leaking from the sump plug even though I've reused the washer a couple of times. This is all pretty good. A little bit of oil there. Let's just get some more light going with the amazing torch. Okay, so there's a bit of oil around up there. It's not too bad. Okay. And I've noticed that the drips that drip out the sump, sump, off the sump guard uh, tend to be at the back. So when I move back here, I notice something. This metal, this gearbox, aluminium metal, is, is actually clean. It, it's 
got quite a lot of oil on it and it's it it's actually not covered in dirt it's actually clean and now that might be because the mechanic that changed my clutch cleaned it all up before he refitted it it might also be because it's been rinsed clean by oil running across it as the car's been driving along as we look over here we can see things get pretty wet with oil it's absolutely soaking up there even the the turbo hose up there the blue well <laughs> it is a blue turbo hose you can't really see it blue because it's so wet with black oil now this is an interesting one actually because when you take the clutch out you have to take the gearbox off and it's also uh, uh, recommended to remove the transfer box because it just makes um, lining everything up and getting everything back together much easier. It's much easier to attach the gearbox and then put the transfer box on rather than trying to get the whole thing lined up with the transfer box in place. The gearbox oil is is is, is um, clear. It, you know, it's it's not black. This this oil here, this is black oil, which means it's come out the sump. It can't be gearbox oil, it can't be transfer box oil, it can't be any other fluid, coolant, power steering, washer fluid, or anything like that, brake fluid. It's definitely, definitely engine oil from the sump. So Freelanders do have a common problem, I'm trying to show you, in the engine bay, and that is the factory duct that runs across here, which I've replaced by blue silicone hose and this aluminium pipe. Where the duct joins here, you get a lot of oil leaking. And you might be thinking, why is there oil in, in this duct? This is the air duct, it comes from the air filter. How has oil got in there? Well, it's all to do with the crankcase ventilation, PCV uh, valve, positive crankcase ventilation. It's Technically, technically, it is a, I think it's called a CDR valve, uh, which is crankcase depression regulation valve, or something like that. Um, it, it, it's not technically a PCV valve, but although everybody calls it the PCV valve, and it's down here, it's that thing underneath there, there's a sort of diaphragm, and that, that allows crankcase gases, so gases that have got past the piston rings into the bottom of the engine, it allows them to vent out. Okay, now on a petrol engine, you're going to be sending that back into the inlet manifold and under engine braking you're going to get a massive vacuum and that, that could sort of pull, pull seals out or pull air through and aerate the oil. So, so the idea of a proper PCV valve is to limit uh, that and also if there's some sort of backfire or something through the through the carburetor or, or carburetor uh, yeah inlet manifold throttle body that's what i'm looking for throttle body then it doesn't sort of go down into the engine and blow things apart okay so so on this car with a diesel there is no engine vacuum there is a throttle body but that actually doesn't work like a real throttle body it doesn't open and close as you drive along it just is open and then it closes when you switch the engine off to aid shutdown it also may move slightly to allow the EGR system, the exhaust gas regulation system, to work. Um, but most of the time, it's fully open. Okay, and I will do a separate video proving that. Okay, I'm actually going to film inside the throttle body as I drive, and we'll see what's going on. That's a separate video. But because it's a diesel, and the speed of the engine is controlled by the fuel, you want to go faster, you inject more fuel in, not the airflow, there's nothing that can create a big vacuum. The only slight vacuum really that you've got is in here of it drawing the air in just, just due to the air filter really. So it's just, just gonna make a very slight vacuum. And the crankcase gases come up through the PCV, uh, which has a sort of spring diaphragm that sort of opens up when the crank pressure builds to a certain point and then it vents out the gases. I fitted a catch can here. I'm gonna be fitting a new type of catch can soon. That removes the oil and then it recirculates back into here, okay, and then goes off 
and through the turbo, through the intercooler, and into the engine. The reason I fitted this catch can is because these engines, most old diesel engines, do have a lot of blow-by gases and a lot of oil mist comes up from the bottom of the engine. If you don't catch that oil, it's going to go back into here, straight through, it's going to be going through the turbo, it's going to be filling your intercooler up with, with oil, it's going to be going into your throttle body, peaking your manifold absolute pressure sensor and your, your air temperature sensor uh, before then going into the engine and being burnt, okay? So engines are meant to run on fuel and air, not fumes and oily mist, okay? So it's done like that for emissions. You can't just dump that oil out on the road. You can't just vent the crankcase gases out to atmosphere. That's what they used to do about 100 years ago, but you can't really do that anymore. So the car manufacturers just root it back into the inlet. There's no choice but to burn it. It's, it's all you can do, and then you, you, you just have the exhaust going out the back. Okay, so I've got that currently in recirculation mode. I used to vent it to atmosphere, uh, but it's a bit iffy with the MOT. They, they like it to be uh, vented back around as it's, as it's meant to be. Okay, so that pipe coming back in there will have crankcase gases. Yours will look slightly different, you'll have a black plastic duct probably, but you'll still have a pipe that kind of comes round and in. Okay, so if your pipe goes straight round and in and you don't have a catch can, not only will you have the crankcase gases, but you'll have loads of oil going in there as well. And sort of from this point downwards, this will be clean inside, up to here, and then it will be black as anything. And if I was to remove this, I won't do it now, but if I was to remove this, this, this hose here will be lovely and clean inside nice just just had air going through it and then these ones will be black probably caked in oil and this joint here from the factory duct leaks oil okay and this is the whole reason why i fitted this ducting here because loads of oils leaking down there getting on the hot turbo making a right old stink and um, you know, just making smoke making a burning smell uh, and the oil eventually will sort of find its way down under the car I don't think that's the problem today. I don't think I've got oil leaking here. It is pretty grimy here, but there's no wet, fresh oil. Okay, so this this is just dirt, really. This is just dust that's come in. Um, I was up at the LRO show at Belvoir Castle yesterday, and it was very dusty there. And yeah, everything's everything's just got this sort of brown dust all over it. Really, it's probably all, all over the car. You see dust here. It's just dust has got everywhere, really. But this is this is um, not really a cause for concern. It's dirty, and it could do with being cleaned. But it isn't leaking fresh oil. Okay. So when I look underneath the car, even though even though that turbo hose. Now let's see if I can somehow show this. Even though that blue turbo hose is oily, above it is dry as a bone. Okay, so now the turbocharger is going to be dry because it gets red hot. But the intake side of the turbo is also dry. The turbo actuator is dry. Everything up there is dry. Okay, so I don't think any oil is coming down from above. Oil is getting out somewhere around here. Now, some of you might have found this a bit cramped under here, really. But some of you might have noticed that when you slip the clutch badly, if you're trying to pull someone out of a puddle or something like that, and you end up slipping your clutch, then you do get a bit of smoke comes out and it does stink. How does that get out if the clutch housing is all sealed up? Well, the answer is it comes out out of some holes which are here okay there are two holes there and if you and you you'll be able to see this but if you look up there you might just be able to see it you actually can see the teeth on the flywheel just up in there okay, I'm actually touching it now that is the flywheel so that's how smoke and heat and vapor and 
dust and everything else gets out of the clutch housing. Okay, it also means if you go wading, water may get in there. I've noticed my clutch is quite grabby after I go wading, and that's why, because water's gone up those holes and then drained back out again. It's not really a bad thing. I'll just rinse the dust off the clutch plate. Now, I'm quite relieved to see that around here, it's not too wet. Okay, there's a bit of oil here, but around these holes, it's actually quite dry. This is dry. This general vicinity is quite dry, which really is a massive relief because that indicates that oil is not getting past the brand new crank seal. I think they call it the rear. I think it's, it's, it's called the rear seal, even though it's not at the back of the engine. It's because in the olden days, engines were sort of in line, rear wheel drive, and, and this output at the clutch was at the back of the engine and then the front was was the uh, you know where the pulleys and everything are um so it's it's the main seal there's one at each end of the crankshaft okay i don't think that's the problem i think something else is going on and judging by the amount of oil here there's actually oil sitting ready to drip there there and there so here it's difficult lining this up properly, really. Uh, here and here are some drips of oil ready to drip in my face. So I think oil is coming from somewhere up the back of the engine, possibly where the sump pan meets the um the block with these all these bolts here although it doesn't actually look too bad it doesn't look that wet you see this this joint here all along is, is dry but there are sort of oil wash marks here on all of this so the the actual point of the leak may appear dry but it's everything behind it that's had oil thrown over it and as the car's been whizzing along it's sort of just been sprayed with oil and, and then we look at this here this is this is wet here that cross member thing there is is slightly wet so what am i going to do well i think the best thing to do is for me to spray the underside of the engine with a degreaser like uh, gunk or geyser or something like that carefully wash it down with the hose so that it's all kind of clean and dry and then just go for a short drive and then have a look and see if I can see where the oil is coming from there should be a little patch of fresh oil leaking from somewhere and it's going to be a case of homing in on it trying to kind of narrow down exactly where this oil is coming from and it might be coming from more than one place this engine's getting quite old now it's done 177 yeah 178,000 miles so it is going to leak a bit but i would like to uh would like to get to the bottom of it really i mean the oil level isn't really going down that quickly i top it up every month or two well, that's kind of normal really um, it does burn a bit of oil, so um, I'm not worried about it leaking so much that my oil level actually gets too low. I'll keep a close eye on it. Whenever I pop the bonnet, I'll pull the dipstick out and just see how it is. Got a bottle of oil in the back, I'll top it up. But, uh, yeah, right. So the next step is to try to clean this up somehow. And then we we'll get a better idea as to where this oil is coming from okay so i'm continuing my investigations into these oil leaks or leak looking up here what i'll do at some point is remove this and give that area a good cleanup but looking under there that's actually dry okay so there's no fresh oil there there will be some oil in that duct and it's going down and i think 
it's leaking out where it joins onto the turbo. So one option would be for me to actually replace this black duct here with blue silicone all the way down, but that's, that's a project for another day. So let's just have another look underneath. So this, I cleaned this up and if we have a little look, I've done a few, I've done a couple of drives lately. So what we can see is difficult to get it's very dark under here. Um, so the sump is spotless, absolutely clean. So is this pipe, bit of oil back here. Okay, a little bit of oil there. And then there's loads of oil here. Okay. So I think I've got two oil leaks. There is oil here, which is kind of um, sort of clear brown oil. Okay. So I think what is happening is there is a leak of either gearbox oil or transfer oil. And hopefully you can see that. I think it's coming out here, because look, there's a drip there. You see how that is not black sooty oil. That is brown, clear oil. Something's leaking around here. So this is the transfer box here. And that's the gearbox there. And the joint is here. Okay, the transfer box has a sort of a kind of a bit this this weird reinforced bit and then there's a kind of like a flange and where those two meet there's probably a gasket and where the shaft that transmits the drive through to the transfer box it, it, there, there will be a seal on that so something somewhere is leaking the oil is coming out of here and it's running down here now this rib bit here gets lower so that explains why it's collecting in this area and collecting here. And it's looking a little bit like it's coming from the gearbox drain uh, cap, uh, gearbox drain plug, but it's not. That's that's actually quite dry. Okay, so it's it's coming from here and you, you can tell because this has just got the most oil here. Okay, so that's oil leak number one. And then there is another leak of black engine oil which isn't really coming out of the sump or the engine block it's I think coming from where that black plastic duct coming down from above joins onto the the, the, the input mouth on the turbo okay so the, the intake on the turbo so this blue hose is the the output of the turbo okay and you can see that's got black oil running down it and that is where's my finger there that is really black okay very black sooty engine oil and if we look up there it's going to be a bit difficult to see this um now this this is magnetic this uh, torch let's see if i can find something steel for to clip on now, if I zoom in, you can see there, that is the bottom, it's not really focusing very well. Um, that's the bottom of that black plastic duct, okay, which brings the, the, um, the air, it's the, it's the air duct, the air intake duct, okay, down to the turbo. And you can see there, there's a big black stain on it. Okay, now it does look fairly dry, but it's a sort of muddy piece of plastic, so it probably is gonna look dry. The turbo itself is is dry. Okay, there's no oil leaking out of the the, the turbo oil um, union there where the, the pipe connects on. So I think this black oil, all of this black oil, all of this staining here, all this mess, this here, is is coming from up there and it's dribbling down and then getting blown back by the wind as the car drives along. And hence, all of this is just kind of covered in it now. From this point forwards, everything is clean. Okay, so anything behind that point is covered in wet oil. You can see it here on the steering rack here. 
Um, everything is glistening with, with fresh oil, including the, the heat shield that's up there, you can just about see, um, is, is kind of wet as well. Everything's wet, but here, towards the front, everything is dry. Okay, even there's a little tiny bit of oil here, but I think that's come that's dripped down from the catch can up above. Okay, um, this hose always seems to have a little bit of oil, but this pipe here, this is dry. Okay, um, so I think that's the other leak. Okay, and that is definitely black engine oil, and that is coming from the blow by gas. Okay, so that's that's the um. Ex uh, not exhaust gas recirculation. It's the 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 PCV, basically the um, blow by gas that comes out out of the bottom of the engine, finds its way up, and comes out through the catch can, which is removing quite a lot of oil, but not all of it. I will be fitting a better catch can soon, and then any oil that's left is coming into the intake, which is coming down and finding its way out um, where that black plastic duct joins. Now there is a jubilee clip there so what I'll have to do is at some point remove the wheel this weekend I'll remove the wheel and sort of get in get in here um, and have a look up there from, from going in from the side where that duct sort of joins on and just see if the clip can be tightened up. I don't know if it's a, a Jubilee clip that can be tightened or a, or a, you know, some kind of clip that needs, looking at that, actually it is a, it is a Jubilee clip. I can't really, it's really difficult. Right, I'm going to try to zoom this. It's very difficult to see this, but up there, up there, Okay, above my Michelor clip, it's that, uh, oh, it's my fingers so big, <laughs> it's that there, um, I'm going to zoom it right in, uh, it's not going to focus, is it? It's just not going to focus, come on, no, not that one, the one above it, that one, that one, that one, there it is. Okay, so, there, it's just, just coming into focus now. Okay, so there is a Jubilee clip on the bottom of that duct, so that probably needs to tighten up. Um, it's going to be really difficult to get to it from underneath, so I'm going to have to go in, take the wheel off and go in from the side. And what I will look to do is to replace that duct totally with with um, blue silicone, okay, so that it's all got big stainless mickle or clamps on and also, when it's blue, it's easier to see the oil leaking. And clearly, see uh, the oil leaking down that uh, that hose there. You can see it there. Okay, so nice clean silicone, blue silicone hose, and you can you can see the oil. No problem. The problem with dirty black plastic is you you just it, it doesn't really change colour much when it gets oily. So right, okay. So that's that one. I think that's going to be the easier one to deal with. This one over here, I. I, I need to know for sure is it the transfer box or is it the gearbox so what I thought I might try and do is actually add a, a bit of coloured dye to the oil okay in here so I have over here I have uh, a bottle of uh, transfer fluid okay and I've got some blue pigment which I use uh, for my um, polyurethane it's a little bottle of blue sort of industrial pigment I thought if I add a tiny bit of that it's not water based it's resin based so it should dissolve in the oil and shouldn't do anything to change the the, the oil's properties if I mix uh, a bit of oil um, well I try and draw out a bit of oil first of all because otherwise if it's already full it's I'm going to blue blue oil pouring in my face so I need to draw out a bit of oil that's what syringe is for and add a bit of pigment see if it even mixes and if it does I'll put that back in and that will allow me to have a look at the colour of this oil and if it looks bluish then it's transfer oil and if it stays the same it's gearbox oil but I can confidently say this is not engine oil this is not sump engine block oil it's just not black enough Okay, 
And if it is the transfer box, yeah, not really sure what I do then. Probably have to try and remove this and, and, and change it. That's a job I'm not looking forward to. Um, just while we're looking at the transfer box, um, some people have commented on my video saying this this is not a transfer box, it's a front differential. Uh, it isn't actually. Front differential is in here. Front differential is in the gearbox. This is the PTU, the power transfer unit, and or commonly known as the transfer box. It's not a sort of transfer box like you would get on a Defender or something like that with a, with a low range. This is a box that all it does is turn the drive 90 degrees to go down the prop shaft, okay, which is up there. Um, so the drive the diff is in the gearbox, the front diff, that sends drive out one side and then through here to the other drive shaft. And then there is a, a sort of two kind of bevel gears in here that send the drive down the prop shaft as well. And, and somewhere in here there's a kind of a sleeve and I don't totally know sort of what the sleeve does. Um, I, I, maybe it allows the drive shaft and the prop to spin at different speeds. Yeah, it probably does actually because if this wheel, if this wheel here is, is, um, is, is, is getting grip but all the others are losing grip then the prop shaft was spinning quicker than that, that one. Um, so yeah, so it's, it, it's not got a differential in it, but it does have uh, a sort of a sleeve, which can spin at a different rate to the inner shaft, which goes straight through and that sleeve can wear. Uh, I don't think that causes the oil leak. Uh, I, I don't know what the symptoms are of the worn sleeve. Actually, I'm not sure actually, but it is a common problem. And, um, yeah, maybe, maybe it is, you know, worth removing this just to um, recondition it, or fit a reconditioned one with a new sleeve and new seals and everything like that. So maybe this oil leak is a, is, is a message really to me to, uh, to, to, to swap this for a better one. But um, Right, I'm going to see if I can mix some blue dye in with some transfer oil now and see what happens. Okay, I've just put a little bit of fresh oil in here. I thought it would be better to use clean oil. Just so I can see if this even dissolves. I just want to do this before I start drawing out old oil. Right. I don't know if this is going to mix. Mm, it's not looking good. Yeah, it's not really looking good. I don't know. Yeah, it seems to be... Needs a bit of mixing. No, that isn't mixing, is it? Oh, dear. Might have to get some, like, oil paint or something. See if that mixes. No, this is no good. All it's done is just sunk to the bottom. Okay, right, back to the drawing board on that. Okay, so here we are, day three. Still leaking oil. Okay, and I still don't know exactly where it's coming from. It's mostly clear oil. There's a little bit of black oil. This this looks a bit black, but that's um, because there's a little bit of sooty engine oil in it, which is coming from this duct here where that duct meets the turbo okay now I'm not too worried about that because I'm going to be fitting new catch cans and sorting all this out very soon okay so the the main concern is the clear brown oil which is coming from either the transfer box or the gearbox and I don't know which so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and add some coloured dye. Okay, so I bought this. I tried using resin pigment that I used from a polyurethane, it just didn't mix. So now I've got some oil paint, okay, so oil based paint. I'm going to add a little bit of that, not too much, okay, because I don't want to actually sort of make the oil change its kind of lubrication properties or, or add any uh, abrasive uh, powder or anything to it. This is obviously sort of 
you know, gloopy kind of paint which, which does have some kind of chemical powder in it but um, is very very fine so I add a little bit of that blue to some transfer oil orange to some gear oil mix that thoroughly I will extract out a similar amount so because one or even both of the two gearboxes and tra the transfer box and the gearbox uh, may be actually still full to the brim if it's transfer fluid that's leaking the gearbox I'm, I'm not going to be able to get any more oil in if the gearbox is full so I need to pull some oil out first okay so if I pull out I don't know 100 mils or something like that and then a mix up I don't really want to add this to old oil so I'll pull out 100 millimeters dump that and then measure out uh, the same quantity of fresh fluid add the colorant and then use the syringe to put it back in okay and, and then obviously you kind of rinse that thoroughly before doing the other color so I'm going to use blue in the transfer uh, orange in the main gearbox and we'll see what color is leaking out the bottom of the engine right so let's have a little look under here at first glance it all looks nice and clean actually this pipe is all nice and silver sump is all nicely polished it's all looking good but then when I look a bit closer I can see now be careful because this is all gonna be hot because I've been out recently this has some black oil on it not a lot but that is coming down from up the top there um, yeah and sort of running down here okay so that's most definitely engine oil it's very very black and sooty but then over here we can see that there is some clear oil okay so this one here yeah, that's it looks black but it's not as black as the other oil you can see there it's it's it's, it's clear okay I don't know why that bit was so flat that might have just had some dirt in it but but this oil here you know it's it's quite clear compared to the sooty the there's, there's no sort of combustion soot in it it's, it's just dark gear oil or transmission oil now the two oils are the different type but they're very very similar in appearance and viscosity so the thinking is that in, in order to identify which one it is I'll add colored dye to each of the oils so here's the transfer box here and the oil seems to be coming from the, the joint kind of here it's difficult to see really here you can see look, there's loads of it um, the joint between the two so it could be either gearbox oil or transfer or even a mixture of the two the only way to see is to add the color dye and just see what color the oil is that then comes out if it's the gearbox not really sure what to do with the gearbox I'm not taking the gearbox off uh, I, I just I don't know really I don't know what I'd do then I probably have to just block up the holes in the under pan and just put some put some kind of foam or something down to kind of collect the oil that drips um, transfer box is a little bit easier to deal with I mean it's still a major job but you can take out take take the wheel off and the, the hub carrier split the ball joints pull out a drive shaft and then just sort of undo and and apparently it's fairly straightforward you, you just you undo all the bolts and then the transfer box kind of comes off um, disconnect the prop shaft as well um, but I have read up on it and it's one of those jobs that's doable at home on the driveway okay right I'm going to mix up some coloured oil I'm going to find the drain plug for this which is up the back somewhere I'll get a long socket bar in above all of this lot um, take out the drain plug stick the syringe hose in and suck out some oil and uh, and then re-add blue oil and then I'll do the gearbox which I'll probably have to take the car down off the ramps and uh, jack up this 
wheel because I need to take that wheel off to get into the gearbox filler plug on the side. Um, I'll do that one. I'll do that one second. Okay. Okay, so I've just put 100 millilitres of this uh, transfer fluid in here and I've dumped in about, I don't know, about a third of a tube of paint into here and it's kind of mixing. Not quite as uh, dissolvable as I thought it would be. You'd think oil paint in oil, it would just completely mix in, no problem. So I'm going to give this a good stir. The, the important thing is that the oil is going blue, which is what I wanted. I'm going to try to mix in all of this uh, sludge at the bottom here. So, uh, right, I'll stop filming. I'll give this a good old stir. Okay, that's mixed in quite well, actually. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is take the drain plug off, or the, the filler plug. I don't think there is a drain plug on the transfer. Filler plug off, extract out at least 100 millilitres. Probably do... Uh, a little bit more than that, maybe 120, just, just so that I don't end up with any of this pouring in my face as I'm pumping it into the transfer housing. Um, yeah, right, let's do that now. Okay, so... It's very difficult getting in here. The transfer drain plug is up there. Hopefully you can see this. It's, it's it's there, okay. And I've taken out the plug. It's a 13 millimeter socket, and basically just get a real long bar and take it all the way back to here. It was very very tight on mine. I think that's probably the garage that did my clutch. Of uh, will have had to have refilled the fluid and yeah, tightened it up quite a bit. So I'd get a bit of a a bar on that and free it up and then undo it uh, so that is out now no oil kind of poured out the car is on ramp so it's leaning back slightly so I was kind of half expecting some oil to dribble out um, but it didn't which kind of suggests that this is the one that's leaking but we shall see right I'm just going to get the syringe now uh, with this tube and stick this in and then draw out some oil. Yeah. Right, this is not going well. I'm trying to get this clear hose into the transfer fill hole and it just won't go in. I just don't know what is going on, there's just something in the way. I don't know if it's like the cogs or something inside, but I just can't get the pipe in, which means I can't draw out the old oil. There's no drain plug from what I can see. And what's strange is I changed my transfer oil not so long ago and I managed to do it then. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe I used a thinner piece of hose. Uh, I just cannot get this into the, the hole. Okay, so... I might just have to just put the blue oil in. I hope I can get a reasonable amount of it in without drawing out old oil. Okay, so I've stuck a bit of this blue oil in. I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know how much of this I'm going to be able to get in. Now, if it is the transfer box that's leaking, then the oil level should have dropped a bit. And I'll see if I can get some of this in, but... I just think this is going to end up in a big mess. I'll give it a go and see how much goes in. Okay, well, all of that went in pretty much, apart from the little bit left in the hose here. Um, I've pumped in a, nearly 100 millilitres of this bright blue oil and it went in and just started to dribble back out. Okay, so. There's a possibility that that is the fluid that's leaking and I've just put back in what's leaked out. There's also a possibility that when my clutch was done, the garage followed the Haynes manual which says to put the fluid in and then withdraw, I think it's 120 millilitres, it might be 150 millilitres. Okay, um, I've, I've, I've heard of a lot of people who don't bother doing that 
uh, withdrawal of the fluid after after brimming it, and they haven't had any issues at all. So I've put 100 mils in; it's gone in. Um, I'm now putting this, the, the the plug, the fill plug, back on, and uh, yeah, we'll just have to see what colour of the oil is that's leaking out. Okay, so now the transfer oil has been dyed blue. I'm going to take the car down off the ramps, jack up this wheel, take that wheel off, and get into the gearbox fill plug and use the orange pigment with some gear oil. Okay. At the moment I'm fairly confident that it is the transfer oil that's leaking. But uh, I'm going to dye the gearbox oil as well, just just in case that's leaking as well. You never know, both of them might be leaking. Okay, so I've brought the car down off ramps, jacked up this wheel, removed it, and now I can get to the gearbox filler plug, which is difficult to see. There it is, there, that thing. Okay. I can't remember what size socket it is. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll tell you in a moment when I get a socket on it. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen now as well. Okay, so the idea is to remove that, use the, the syringe to uh, pull out 100ml or so of fluid, mix up some new fresh gear oil with some orange paint. Okay, and then inject that back in. That way we've got two very different colours in the oil. Okay, so it'll sort of dye the oil orange or blue. So we should see uh, a leakage underneath the car, maybe even a blue puddle on the, on the floor, maybe, I don't know. Or, or orange, or both. I don't know what happens if you mix blue and orange. Not sure what colour that would make. Some sort of green or brown or some sort of colour. Who knows, uh, if there's any artists uh, watching, uh, do leave a comment and let me know what colour that will make. Okay, right, let's get this, uh, get this filler plug out and pull out some oil. Okay, so it is a 24mm socket. Okay, oh dear me. Ugh. Even with the wheel off, it's a little bit tricky to get in here. Right, let's undo this. Now, I'm really hoping that this gearbox oil will be full to the brim. Okay. Uh, there's gearbox, gearbox on plug. Um, yeah, just try to work out. It's I, I don't think that's leaked any, but we'll pull out, pull some out with the syringe, just to just to be able to get some more in. Right, so when I put the tube in, I, I poked it in a very small amount and then pulled it out again and it had gear oil on it, so the gearbox is pretty full. Now the oil is pretty, pretty dark oil. Now I don't know if the gear oil was, was changed when the clutch is done. I mean the gearbox has to be removed, but I don't know if it could be removed with like the oil still in it and then just refitted full of oil. I, I don't know, I'm not sure. If, if you know, please comment below. Um, but this, uh, for a clutch that was done a month ago, yeah, that's pretty dark oil. Hmm, okay, if it was drained, maybe the old oil was just put back in, which is not very good. But uh, um, Right, so how much have we got there? It's about a hundred and 20 when you include what's in the in the pipe. So I'm going to pull that out. I've dripped too much. 
Right, and I'm going to chuck that away and colour up some fresh oil. Right, that's the oil, that's the colour it should be. Okay, so this is the manual gearbox oil. Don't try and do this with an automatic. I, I don't know what would happen. It could, could mess up the automatic gearbox. Um, so it's, yeah, 75, 90, fully synthetic. Okay, right, let's get a bit of this bright orange paint in even though the oil is actually quite bright orange already. Right. Right, let's see if this mix is any better than the blue. Right, this is going to take a bit of stirring, I think. Yeah, it's kind of mixing, but not very well. Okay, that's mixed quite well now. Still a little bit lumpy, but that's uh, good enough to inject into the gearbox. Right, let's get the syringe and uh, fill it up with this. Okay, here we go. bright orange oil. So I need to put this in until it starts to overflow and dribble back out. I'll just do it nice and slowly. That's about 50 millilitres gone in. There is a, an air gap uh, above that oil there. You can just see it's about at the 50 mark. Just going to keep going. I prefer not for it to uh, overflow majorly and pour bright orange oil everywhere. air is starting to go through the tube now. That's it. It's all in there. Okay. Okay, so that's just about C there. If I try and zoom that in, it's just starting to dribble back out. Okay, so that is full back to the brim. Alright, so I'm going to put the plug back in now and uh, We'll take the car around the block and just mix that oil in. Okay, so here we are the next weekend. I've done a few short journeys during the week, probably about 50 miles in total. So I'm going to get underneath now and just see if there is any oil leaking. And if so, what colour is it? Is it blue or is it orange? Okay, so let's have a quick look underneath with the torch. Right, okay, now this is interesting, that looks orange to me, yeah, that's, a, that's a pain, I was really hoping it would be blue, because uh, blue is the, the transfer box which is a lot easier to deal with 
and the gearbox but I'm guessing there's a seal in between the two which could be letting oil from either side uh, either either transfer between them or, or come out and drip down underneath so I've just got a bit of a bit of kitchen roll here I'm just going to wipe this put it onto something white uh, it's a lot easier to see colors even though this definitely looks a bit orangey we just need to remember that the oil is quite orangey in color normally in hindsight I should have used uh, green or something uh, but I didn't want to use green because it's too similar to blue you see so you mix blue with brown oil or green with brown oil it's probably going to look the same that yeah difficult to tell there's no real blueness in that what about up here yeah it's, it's just sort of no I suppose there's always the possibility that it could be brown because it's blue and orange mixing together which makes brown apparently so uh, yeah I'm wondering if the, the seal had gone between them and that they are actually mixing um, yeah it's definite definite orange colour up here there, up there there's uh, there was a, a a patch that was quite bright orange not seeing any blueness at all really so what that means is it looks like gearbox oil is is getting out now it could still be this joint in between the the transfer box and the gearbox the the other leak which is the black oil which is coming down up here uh, let's just get the torch so the the turbo elbow there um, has got a definite streak of black oil running down the outside of it okay so that's responsible for all of the black oil uh, which is the one that's most visible on people's driveways and that after I've parked I'm going to be fitting a better catch can very soon which should eliminate that okay so I, I will that that oil is coming down from the duct up, up the top uh, which which obviously is, it contains oil from the blow by gases the catch can I have is not doing a good enough job so I'll be fitting a better one okay and that should remove that oil and prevent it getting to to this part of the uh, air intake system okay so that's less of a concern the gearbox joint and it, it seems to be here that it's it's coming out it's this sort of like little hole here, I don't know quite what that is, yeah, I just, I just did that actually and my finger had a fairly bright orange on it actually. So, yeah, I, I'm, because it's this joint here and not this joint here or, or any sort of uh, anything to do with the gearbox sort of drain plug or anything, I'm confident that removing the transfer box and replacing the, the like the sleeve that sits between them there's, there's a sort of a metal drive sleeve um, and also the seals that go around that should sort that out okay that that should fix that in the meantime there's not a lot I can do about it so what I will do is I will block up the holes on the engine under tray the, the the kind of soundproofing sheet that was in there has been uh, long since sort of disintegrated and thrown away so i may see if i can get a new one of those soundproofing sheets put that in there or some other bit of kind of foam or wadding or something um whatever i put in there it's got to be heat proof okay because all of this gets it's very hot okay so um I, I think the best thing is just to sort of block up the holes so that the oil just kind of collects really I, the worry then is it's going to sort of spill out as soon as I kind of reverse up and, and stop and I don't really want to be dumping large puddles of oil on 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 the road or or on the, the in the car park here or anywhere really that that's going to be even worse than than slow dripping okay so uh yeah i'll have to have a think about that i'll see if i can find some kind of um heat proof sound sound proofing kind of sheet uh 
a bit, a bit like the kind of fiberglass soundproofing sheet that they use around the engine bay. I'll see what I can find and see if I can kind of put some of that underneath the the back of the engine. It doesn't need to be up here around the sump. This is not leaking, okay? So it just needs to be really over on this this sort of gearbox and transfer box kind of side of the engine. So uh, yeah, okay, that that will be something for another video. I'm going to try and uh, wrap this video up now really because I've gone as far as I can with the diagnosis. It does look like a seal between the gearbox and the transfer box. It does look like orange gearbox oil which is uh, annoying because I was hoping it would just be a quick transfer box removal and refit which is uh, which it might still be but the absence of any blue oil is is is, is worrying really um, that's the color I was expecting and we're not seeing any of that okay right let's leave it there then that is it oil leak diagnosed it's the joint between the gearbox and the transfer box and it does look like gearbox oil that is leaking okay what I do about it I'm really not sure I'll cover that in a future video okay so um, that's it for this video I hope that was useful and I hope that the idea of putting colored oil paint in the oil is something that some of you can use to diagnose your own oil leaks okay so um, uh, yeah okay right good thank you very much for watching we'll leave it there don't forget to like and subscribe I'll see you in the next video thank you bye